Yo, Elliot, I'm a young man who's trying to find his way in life. And recently, I feel as if I lack leadership, composure, and courage. I want to ask you, how can I develop these traits? Because sometimes I feel as if I get timid too quickly looking for your advice. The very first one, which is leadership, comes from allowing yourself to be led. I know this sounds crazy. People think that, oh, to be a leader, I now must always take charge. I must always be in charge. I must practice being in charge. But it doesn't, it doesn't work that way because leadership has to do with hierarchy. And the only way you move up a hierarchy is like a ladder, which means I have to start at this rung before I get to this rung. People start at the bottom rung, standing at the ladder, bottom of the ladder, and they're like, I want to be a leader. So they think that they need to, well, I need to do what the guy at the top of the ladder is doing. And it's like, well, practice leadership, go to leader. It doesn't work that way. Just like with everything that's ascendant, leadership is ascendant. That means look to a leader. To become a leader, you must look to a leader. The guys in the military get this. I was never in the military, but I appreciate the military specifically because of the discipline and the hierarchy and leadership, right? That's why people go to, lead, go to the military because they learn leadership. But how do you learn leadership in the military? Follow. As soon as you get there, you start out as a private, right? You start out as you know, a recruit. You're in the boot camp. And the only way that you'd start developing leadership is by being a good follower. I think that's even one of the, one of the sayings, a military saying is like, you know, good leaders are good followers, right? The best, the best leaders are the, are the best followers, right? Because what happens when you follow? You get to see what leadership looks like. This is, and this is a part of the reason why fatherlessness is such a scourge on men, because fathers are the leaders of the home. And a young boy, as he starts emerging in his masculinity, usually around the age of four, that's when Freud calls the Oedipal complex starts to develop, if this isn't uh, rightly ordered. Because around the age of four, a boy starts to recognize that he's not his mom. Well, I'm not my mom, but dad and I are of the same order. Dad. So he start. He it's not un, it's not conscious, but he starts to look up to his dad. This in a rightly ordered society, in a rightly ordered home, the boy looks to his dad for what a boy should do, and a good dad will say that to him too. It's like, young, you're you're becoming a young man. You're a boy, right? I have to remind that of my my son a lot of times to say, you're not, you can't do what your sisters do. You're not like them, right? And so you know, this was when he was younger. Now he, oftentimes he'll refer to me in certain situations, and he realizes. Well, you know, I can't, I, my mom won't be able to, 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 to mirror, I can't mirror my mom in this way. I need to mirror my dad. This is why men are having such a hard time being leaders. And if you don't have this capacity to follow in leadership because you have daddy issues, then what happens is you step outside of the order of man. Men, this is why that, there's that term, order of men. Men are in an order. Men operate out of order. But when you step outside of that order, you are alone. And these people who like to talk about sigma males, right? These men who say, oh, I'm not an alpha beta. They don't play that. You know, they, they say, I'm not getting into the order of man, which is fine. But now you've stepped out of the order and you're a lone wolf. And you think yourself, think highly of yourself because you're a sigma male. No, that just means you're you're by yourself. You stepped out of the, you've stepped out of the order of man. You're, then you're not really a man. There's no such thing, right? You could pretend all you want, but you, there, is, there, will, there is and always will be a hierarchy of man. And it's okay to follow, to see. This is how we ascend in business. This is how we ascend in sports. This is how we ascend as men in every regard, in every way of our life. We look up, we, we hire mentors, or we join the military, or we hire coaches, right? We look up. We have friends that we know are better than us. And we work with them because they can help us get better. Men pull each other up. But in order to be pulled up or to pull up, you got to get in the order. You got in the line. Leadership means 
you got to get into the order of man. Look for someone to lead you in some way. Hire a personal trainer, right? Join, uh, I don't know, some organization, right? Get into some organizational structure, right? Uh, you know what's really good for this? Martial arts. Martial, I have lots of friends that do jujitsu, right? You start out as a white belt, right? Wow, white belt. And then you become what? A yellow belt and then a blue belt and then a, all these different belts until you get to a black belt. And it's amazing, right? Because martial arts, martial is like military. That's where the word comes from, right? Martial law, martial arts. It's military arts, even though that you guys are, you know, it's, it's sport, but it's still a martial art. It's still a military, right? Martial arts. Martial arts is a great way to develop leadership, not because they're teaching you how to be a leader, but because you get into an order. So that's leadership. Composure is everything that we were talking about earlier today. Composure is all about not acting out of emotion. Composure is another way for being stoic, right? Someone who's stoic is master of his domain. He's composed. Com and I like that word composed too, right? Because think about what a composition is, right? You have these notebooks, they call them composition notebooks. When somebody writes a a, 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 a musical masterpiece, they call him a composer, right? I'm a composer or I'm composing a uh, an essay in my composition notebook. Composure is more than just being stoic and still. Composure is out of that stillness taking steps to create something beautiful, right? To compose an essay means I have a clean piece of paper and I'm going to compose my thoughts. That's another thing. People say that. Compose your thoughts. Before you say something, compose your thoughts. What is that word even like the etiology of that word? Let's think about it. Come, right? Which means with, right? Come, right? Come. Composure. To pose is like a posture. To, to come together with. Bring your thoughts together. Bring the notes and music together. Compose, you could even compose a group. I'm composing a group of like-minded men here, right? The King Transformation Program. This is, I've composed this group of men. Composure is coming from a place of love, as we spoke about before, right? Because love is stillness, right? Fear is anxious. Coming from a place of love to start putting pieces together, right? Composure. So composure goes above and beyond stoicism. I'm kind of just rephrasing so that I'm getting clearer on my thoughts here. Composure is putting things together from a peaceful place, a loving place. Courage is a beautiful thing. It's another beautiful word. Courage, C-O-R, C-O-U-R, but I, I actually looked into the etiology of this word, comes from with heart. Right? This is where we get uh, the word corazón, right? In Spanish, heart, corazón, courage, corazón, right? Um, cor coronary, coronary, right? A coronary heart disease, heart, heart muscles, right? Coronary means coming from the heart. Courage means acting with heart, which is different than bravery, right? Coming from the heart versus coming from chaos. Coming from the heart means I know this is right and I am going to do it. I'm going to say it. Courage coming from the heart means, again, it comes from love. All three of these have to come from love, right? True leadership, I spoke about this last week in a video. True leadership means that out of love, I lift up. I have to love the people that I'm leading. This is why those women, feminist-minded women, who don't, don't like to hear that a husband is the leader of the family, the father's leader of the family, doesn't, they don't understand true leadership, right? They have a distorted view of leadership. Leadership means that I pour out all my love upon that which I am leading, right? The same way that Christ leads the church. He's the head of the church. The way Christ led, which was a, a selfless love, is, is true leadership. Composure, coming from love, right? I'm putting these things together out of love. Courage is speaking up, acting up, doing something that may be 
scary that may get you canceled, right? That may uh, upset some people, but it must come from love. Bravery, on the other hand, comes from ego. This is why when you study King Warrior Magician Lover and the work of Robert Moore, which by the way, Robert Moore is a, is a brilliant man, may he rest in peace. He's got a lot of lectures that you can download. I don't know if they're available any longer. Um, he talks about how the immature warrior acts bravely. Brave is out of ego, right? Meaning like, I'm gonna run in there and I'm gonna create chaos because I want to, right? because it's gonna make me look awesome, right? Where courage is more a matter of love. What is right in this moment, even if it's going to get me canceled, right? This is the world we live in right now because the First Amendment is, is basically squashed. So someone whose courage is gonna speak up against all the affronts against the family. This is what I do. This is why I call out feminism. This is why I call out LGBT. This is why I call out all these leftist Marxist, I, Marxist ideologies, right? Because they're so ingrained and embedded in our culture through the ideological subversion that people personally identify with them and they virtue signal. They think they're somehow uh, special and, and, and virtuous. But if you really boil it down to it, I'm courageous enough to speak this, to speak out on these things because I know that it's all out of love for the family. My whole mission really boils down to love for the family. It comes across as love for men because men lead families. And I'm a man and y'all are men. So I speak to men as it relates to how men can be who we need to be in order to repair the family. Courage, right? Even though people will make reaction videos of me and they call me misogynist and all that kind of stuff, it doesn't bother me because it's coming from love, right? If it was coming out of fear and it was, it was ego-based, it was like, oh, they're making me look bad, they're making fun of me, then I would be, then I'd be upset, right? Because it's me. But it's like, no, as long as the men who are going to be the fathers and patriarchs of the future can hear what I'm saying, then I'm doing the right thing. Love. How do you develop these, these traits? Well, leadership, I already told you how to develop that, tra that trait. Composure has everything to do with our previous conversation about creating space between stimulus and response and then acting out of love, right? Proceeding with love. Courage is the one that requires that you do it in order to have the power. Courage can't be contrived. It has to be done. You have to do it, and then you get the power. Then you become courage. Then you become courageous, right? Leadership, you're practicing, and you're, you're, it's kind of a back door, right? You become a good leader by being a good follower, right? Uh, so it's sort of a back door, right? And the next thing you know, like, wow, I'm actually, I'm a leader. Wow. Composure it takes practice, right? As we spoke about, but courage, you have to head it. You have to, that's why it's called courage, man. You got to go head on with it. You do it and then you see, you realize I'm not afraid anymore, right? Like that movie, uh, um, Home Alone, right? That boy, when those robbers were coming to the house, he confronted them first, right? He was like, I'm going to, I'm going to take care of my home. I'm going to protect my home. Right, so he's facing them head on, and he was like, I'm not afraid anymore. Why? Because you confronted this head on. You didn't go run away and hope that courage comes. That's another thing people do. They think they can wait for courage to show up, or that they can think themselves into being courageous. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna psych myself up. It don't work that way. You just do it, and that's how you get it. He says, oftentimes I feel like I get too timid too quickly looking for your advice. Well, that may be the case, but if you just take those steps that I described in relationship to leadership, composure, and courage, and you keep working on it, you keep working on it. Let me tell you something about working on these things and why they're worthy. They're not worthy in and of themselves. Leadership, composure, and courage are not, they are worthy in themselves, but the, but the real gift is not in the ends, it's in the means. By you practicing these things, right? By you being bad at these things and disciplining yourself and devoting yourself and doing the damn thing every day, you become the kind of person that earns leadership, composure, and courage. If I could wave a magic wand and give you these things, right? 
then you really wouldn't know what they're worth. You really wouldn't value them. And God does this. He knows there are certain areas where you're going to be good, you're going to be great, and you take it for granted. I know I do. I've taken, I've taken many gifts. When I say gifts, it's different than a fruit. Fruit you have to work for, right? Like I got these uh, trees out here. I got I to gotta like fertilize. I got to water. I got to work on these to get fruit. Gifts is like God just gave you that, right? God just gave me charisma and the gift of gab. I could just talk and people find me fascinating to hear. So that's a gift. I've taken that for granted, right? When I, there was a time when I was becoming resentful of making YouTube videos and I took, my, I took my gift for granted. But if I had to work for it, then you don't take that for granted. Something you got to work for, you don't take for granted. You know the value of that thing, right? And so it's going to be that way for you. It doesn't have to happen overnight. In fact, it's better that it doesn't because the means is why you're here. It's the cultivation of these virtues that are going to save your soul. If they were just given to you, you they would lack real, ver, real strength of virtue. So... Enjoy the journey of developing these virtues, dude. Done. Did you know that there's a secret psychological and social war on masculinity in the West since at least the 1960s? If you think I'm crazy, you need to watch my new free masterclass. You'll learn the history and origin of this war, as well as how it's affecting your health, your finances, and how females respond to you. If you're a man who's open to a compelling vision of traditional masculinity, financial freedom, success with women, and generous leadership, then you'll definitely want to study this class. It's called Make Men Strong Again, How Millions of Men Are Fighting Back and Winning the War Against Masculinity. Just click the link in this video or visit MakeMenStrongAgain.com and get this brand new masterclass. It's completely free. It will blow your mind and has a ton of value and it's about 40 minutes long. So make sure that you pay attention and take notes. Why am I sharing this? I'm a mentor to millions of men worldwide on YouTube. So I'm familiar with the biggest reasons why men today are failing in so many areas of their life. And the answer will rock your world, but it's not totally your fault. Find out what's really going on. Click the link in this video to watch this class and start taking action today.